Hey, I'm gonna walk you step by step through Google Merchant Center next. And if you don't know who I am, my name is John. I'm the CEO of Stub Group, and we are a digital advertising agency and premier Google partner, and we help businesses dominate Google ads, hence this video today. So Google Merchant Center Next is the next iteration of Google Merchant Center. Uh, Google Merchant Center is a tool that you need if you're an e-commerce website, you're selling products through your website, and you want to leverage Google Shopping. You have to send your data over to Google Ads for those Google Shopping campaigns through Google Merchant Merchant Center, which is now called Google Merchant Center Next. And really, this is just a big uh, change of how things look, where you go to input information. Google, as they like to, has changed the names of many different reports and locations and just kind of scattered everything, frankly. So if you're used to using the standard interface, you're going to have to relearn some things. Um, or if you're brand new and you are starting for the first time with Google Merchant Center Next, you'll at least learn as part of this video where to go to see different things and get things set up. So let's dive in. All right, so I have an example Google Merchant Center next um, account here. And right now we're on the overview tab. Overview tab is where Google is going to give you different cards and pieces of information. In this case, this is a brand new Merchant Center next account. So they're telling you that uh, you need to add a bunch of different stuff to flesh things out. Um, if this were an active account, you'd also see some notifications and different things here about things Google thinks you could do to improve performance, etc. And then this tab over here, very similar to the notifications tab, this is just gonna be where any notifications live that Google is sending to you. So I'm gonna walk through, not um, necessarily an order here because the order in which Google structures these things is a little interesting. But I'm gonna take you first to the places that you would start with if this was a brand new merchant center and you were setting things up. So generally you're gonna to wanna to start with business info. This is where you give information to Google about your business. So you're going to give them your business name, your business address, links to your contact us page, for example, on your website, your customer service, email address, phone number, whether you have live chat support, chat bot support, and if you identify with any of these uh, business identity attributes, and if you wanna add social profiles, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I recommend filling out as much of this as possible. The more you give to Google, the more Google likes you. And also be very, very careful to make sure the business name and business address here are accurate and match up with what's on your website. Because if you uh, make mistakes there, I've definitely seen that cause suspensions along with many, many other things that can cause suspensions, which we also help many advertisers figure out and, uh, and deal with. So those are your business details. You'd enter all that, make it as perfect as possible. Then you will actually need to claim and verify your online store, essentially your website. So in this case, I just threw an example.com, but you would, what you would do is you would take your website domain, you would put it here, and then you would follow one of these options to verify to Google that you own that uh, domain and have authority to advertise it. It's important to know that only a single Google Merchant Center can advertise a domain. It's not like Google Ads accounts where you could have multiple ads accounts potentially advertising the same domain. With Google Merchant Center, it's one-to-one. It's -one. And so you can only use this Merchant Center if you're gonna advertise the, your website. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can follow here to verify. I'm not gonna dive more deeply into those because they're fairly self-explanatory, but that's one of the things you need to do if you are setting things up. You also have the option, this is on the newer side, to uh, give Google a link directly to your checkout page. You don't have to do that. Um, the idea behind this is that if you give it, this can be helpful um, in like remarketing campaigns, performance max campaigns, where maybe Google sees that somebody's already added something to their cart and they're trying to get them back to your website to complete a purchase. And so this gives them the ability to potentially send them directly to your checkout page or your cart page. Um, I recommend going ahead and adding it. Um, I haven't seen a lot of data either way to say good or bad, honestly. Uh, it's, it's not, you know, it's, a, it's a newer a newer feature, but generally speaking, I'd say it's, it's worth going ahead and adding. So those are the options on this details tab. It's very important to remember there's tabs here. So Google has the options on the left, but then also the tabs. So there's kind of categorical options and then lots and lots of tabs. So let's go over to the stores tab. On the stores tab, you can add a business profile. So if you were using Google Business Profile Manager and you had kind of multiple stores and things, you'd add profile here. This is not something that I see used a lot. Um, so this is kind of more applicable to a smaller percentage of advertisers, but if it's applicable to you, you'll know about it and this is where you'd go. 
And then countries, this is where you want to specify what countries you want your ads to appear in, and you can add countries from here. All right, so that's business info. Then let's go over to shipping and returns. So these two policies are very important to add to Google. Again, uh, suspensions can result if you don't add appropriate uh, information on these policy pages. So with shipping policies, you need to tell Google how you ship your products to customers, how long it takes, uh, what the cost structure is, etc. Um, I'm not going to go through all of that in this uh, in this guide because that could be a whole separate video. Um, and let me try and get back to this page here. All right, Google, gotta love Google sometimes. Um, so I'm not gonna go through actually creating a policy. You can, you can dig into it, but basically what you wanna make sure to do is to match what you have on your website in terms of the shipping policy on your website, as well as obviously make sure that it matches your actual shipping policy when you ship products out to structure things so that Google knows accurately what you are charging for shipping when people go to place orders through your website. So you can control that on this page and then return policies. Same idea, here you can add a return policy, link to the place on your website with your return policy, and then various information about do you accept returns or not, exchanges, do you have charge restocking fees, do you offer refunds for how long, all that important information so that people know what they're getting into when they uh, go to place an order through your website. So shipping policies, return policies are under this, uh, this tab, this category here. Next up, let's go to products. So this is where the magic happens in terms of actually getting products into the account. Now, you'll see this add products button here. You see there's no products in here because this is a brand new account. If you already had products in here, you see a list of all your products here. Now, if you click this add products button, it's gonna take you over to this page here. The other way to get to this page is from this gear icon up here. So this is um, what used to be called feeds in previous Google Merchant Center. Now it's called data sources. So feeds are now data sources. So if you go to data sources and you go to add a product source, again, you get to the same page. And there's a couple different ways you can add products to Google Merchant Center. You can upload them from a file, like an Excel file. You can use a Google Sheets template. You can add products one by one, actually directly within Merchant Center. Or what most, most businesses do is they add products using API. So sometimes they're directly linking uh, or connecting something like Shopify to Google Merchant Center and then sending the data via API there. Um, or sometimes, uh, for example, Stub Group, we use tools on behalf of the Lever clients. We'll use third-party feed management tools that grab data from a Shopify or a Magento, for example. We are able to uh, make modifications, improve the data quality, map different things in the third-party tool, and then we send that over as a data source to, uh, to Google as part of this. So this is where your product sources, previously called feeds, live. Let's go back over to products. All right, so when you have products, you'll see all your products in this tab. Then there's this needs attention tab. This used to be called diagnostics in previous Google Merchant Center. Now it's called needs attention. And these are the products where Google either has warnings or uh, disapprovals. So there's a host of policies related to Google Merchant Center and Google Shopping that you have to abide by. And uh, usually in almost every Merchant Center account, there will be some uh, products that are being flagged by Google for various reasons. This is where you see what those products are along with the list of the reasons so you can go through and fix them. Could be everything from, hey, this product page uh, URL doesn't work to you know, your image size is wrong to your missing required fields, fill in the blank. There's all sorts of options and you'll see those here. Next up, you've got sales tax. Why sales tax is in the products tab and not a different tab? I don't know, doesn't make sense to me, but this is where it is. So if you're looking for sales tax, it's buried here on the products tab. And this is where you specify to Google in what states you charge sales tax. You can just go to edit here and you can select the states. Um, you know, some businesses charge in all the states. Some businesses only charge in the state they're located in. Obviously it depends on what you do, but this needs to match what you actually charge on your website. Next up, we have automatic improvements. So these are a couple of options. They are turned on usually, uh, turned on by default. And this gives Google permission to crawl your website and see hey, if there's information on your website about your products that is different than in the feed or the data source now that you sent over to Google. 
um, having this turned on gives Google permission to go with what's live on your website rather than the feed. So for example, if your price update on your website and it hasn't updated yet in your product feed, Google can see that and then update the price in your ads. Now, generally speaking, this is good. I like having this turned on with the exception of with Shopify stores, we generally turn it off. Um, and this is even based upon Shopify's own supports recommendation. There are some things with how their API works with Google where we've seen things get messed up and broken when this automatic updates is turned on specifically for Shopify sites. Um, the other automatic option here, which is not necessarily turned on by default, is image improvements. So you can turn this on. Let's say, for example, maybe you've got watermarks or overlays things in your images on your website. Those are things that Google does not allow in the images of your products that you use in Google Shopping. And so if you turn this on, Google can try to automatically remove those things, take those out, scrub them so that more of your product images are able to be used in your advertising. And kind of a very similar idea to that too is Product Studio, this tab over here. So Product Studio is something that's new to Google Merchant Center um, next, did not exist in the previous Google Merchant Center. Uh, we have a whole separate video you can watch about this. At a high level, this is an AI tool that you can use to make modifications to your product images. You can you know, make different backgrounds, you can edit things, a bunch of cool stuff. So I recommend going and watching that Product Studio video that we created. And that's the last of the tabs here on the products category. Last up in this your business section is store quality. So this is where Google will look at the information that you're providing to Google and they'll kind of rank you, give you scorecards on different things. So for example, you might see a scorecard saying how you, the number of product images that you're providing compares to your competitors. And they'd be like, hey, you should add some more. Or, hey, you're doing great. You've got more on average than your competitors. Um, and that's just one example, a bunch of different examples of where they're basically benchmarking you, comparing you to their best practices and to the averages of competitors and giving you ideas to improve the data you're sending to Google which then in theory should improve your ranking and the performance of your campaigns. Next up under this marketing tab, you'll see free listings. And I will tell you, sometimes you're gonna see different options here on the left than you see on my screen right now, because sometimes when you turn on different features um, or different things get data, this layout changes. So we have some client accounts where you see more options actually than, than this on the left-hand column. So if you have a view that differs from what you're seeing on my screen here, that's most likely why. So this free listing section here, this is where it controls the data that you're sending to Google and that Google is then showing for free just as part of organic search results. So Google looks at kind of the schema structured data you're sending to Google Merchant Center and that can inform um, when someone searches, let's say on the shopping tab and they see free listings show up, not sponsored ads, this can inform that. And so this is kind of where you can see if you're opted into it, you can stop, get out of it. Um, etc. Not, not a lot else you can do here, honestly, but that's this is where you control it. Ad campaigns, this here, generally speaking, I don't think you need to spend much time on this tab. Uh, technically, you can kind of create Google Ads campaigns from within Merchant Center that then go over to your Google Ads account. But generally speaking, I would start from the Google Ads account side of things. It's gonna be cleaner and more straightforward. So by and large, I would say you can ignore this tab. Next up under analytics, you have a summary tab. And so this is a summary of your analytics. Surprise, surprise. Obviously there's no data on my screen here because this is a new account, but this is where you'd see uh, for different day ranges, how many clicks are coming to your products, how much is from free listings, how much is from shopping, if you have shopping enabled, so forth and so on, as well as kind of search terms and different ideas down here. Then you also have products under analytics. This is confusing because you have products under your business and products under analytics. So, um, not really an ideal scenario. I want to say that again. So you have products under analytics and also products under your business. Um, it's confusing to have the same name for the same cat for, for two different categories, two different places, but again, that's Google for you. So here under summary, this is where you'd see information about how much traffic specific products are getting on this tab. You'll see information about competitors, how your products are comparing with competitors in this tab. You'll see information about your most popular products on this tab. And then here, promotions, this is where you can enter specific promotions into Google Merchant Center. So let's say you're running a back to school sale, 10% off with a coupon code. You can enter that information here and then that will inform Google to be able to promote that along with your product ads. And if you start using the promotions tab, generally you're gonna see a category for promotions show up here on the left, um, but Google's kind of inconsistent with that right now. 
But again, just to, to kind of recap, um, under analytics, this is analytical data about your products, whereas under your business, this is the actual raw product information along with some other random tabs. Is that all? Actually, no, that's not all. Those are the options here on the left, but then there's this gear icon up here with more information. So data sources is what we already looked at. That's where you go to actually add uh, what used to be called feeds. Uh, you actually add your product data to Google. Um, and you've got kind of normal feed stuff on this tab. And then if you're using SFTP and Google Cloud Storage, you'd come over to this tab here. After that, we have people and access. So this is where you'd add users to your account then apps and service. So this is where you can add different Google apps and other third-party apps to connect to Google Merchant Center. So for example, when you link your Google Merchant Center to your Google Ads account, you'll see that show up under here. Uh, if you're a local business and you have a physical storefront, you can link your Google business profile here as well and start using like local listing ads, uh, or inventory ads, stuff like that. And there's various third-party apps you can add as well. Then after that, you have conversion settings. So there's a couple of things here. You can turn on auto tagging, which basically helps you track in Google Analytics um, orders that are coming from Google Merchant Center, from Google Shopping listings. I recommend turning this on. Uh, I definitely always, always turn auto tagging on when you can, my recommendation. And then this here is a, a newer option that Google's come out with. Basically, and you may have seen this in ads. You might see an ad where it says, you know, 1,000 plus people shopped here recently, or 100 people placed an order here recently, or you know, popular product, little tags that Google can add. This is a beta feature, and by turning this on here, you give Google permission to use that with your ads. It's not always going to happen. Google gets to decide when and where they want to and how exactly they format it, but this gives them the permission to add those annotations. Generally speaking, I'd say go ahead and turn it on. Um, I like giving Google the ability to make our ads stand out and, and test different things that may improve click-through rate and conversion rate. So most of the time I would turn this on unless you have a specific you know, concern related to your company and why you might not want that turned on. All right, so add-ons are other things you can add on to your Google Merchant Center Next account. Um, some of this would be more relevant than others. Uh, API calls is not relevant for most advertisers, but if you're doing a lot, have a high volume of, of products and frequent changes to those products, you might want to look at that. Um, dynamic remarketing, generally you'll want to turn this on. So you can click that add to get that started. You can build custom reports, give yourself the option to do custom reports by clicking that. Uh, we talked about local listings. You can turn that feature on here if you have an in-store product you're trying to feature near your, your, your physical business. Um, you can manage the Google customer reviews program from over, over here and uh, get that added. Uh, local inventory ads from over here. If you have loyalty programs, you can share information with Google about that here. If you have product ratings, uh, which is awesome to have, highly recommend, then you can um, basically start the process of getting permission from Google to feature those in your ads here. Uh, you can control how your products are shown to different customers in specific regions here. And if you are selling vehicles, you can get into vehicle ads here. And then you can see what you already have opted into on this tab here. You've got general account options over here. So a couple different things. You can turn on product protection, which basically limits the number of products that could be deleted at one time. Uh, this is something that could uh, prevent um, you know, big mistakes happening in the account, so you might want to turn that on. You can manage your language and time zone here. If you're doing comparison shopping services stuff, you manage that, or you can see the contact information there. Um, if you're doing advanced account setup, uh, you can do stuff here as well. And if you wanted to close a Merchant Center account, you could click that button. Outside of that, uh, you have this email archive. This is gonna be a list of emails that Google has sent to you about Google Merchant Center. And then personal preferences, you can control which types of emails Google sends to you from there. And that is a wrap. So hopefully it's a helpful step-by-step -step walkthrough, Google Merchant Center next. Obviously there's a lot goes, that goes into actually building things out, creating the policies, getting the ads, or getting the you know, data sources in, all that good stuff. And if you don't want to bother yourself with that, if you want to run your business and not run Google Merchant Center, uh, here at Stud Group, we'd love to help you out with that. We work with many, many e-commerce businesses, helping them run their Google ads and also handle the Google Merchant Centers. And you can reach out through studgroup.com for more information. So thanks for watching. Please tap subscribe to get more videos just like this one. And until next time, take care.